What's up, everyone? I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and I'm bringing you episode number 14 of Teach Me How to Lightroom. Don't forget, there's a link in the description to download the raw file to this exact image so that you can follow along with the tutorial if you want. And if you like this edit and you like what we do here, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Well, we're gonna take this image here. This is a portrait of a cosplay hybrid of Princess Zelda slash Slave Leia from Star Wars. You can check out her modeling Instagram down in the description below as well. And we're gonna take it from here. We're gonna do all kinds of color grading to it and we're gonna bring it here. Bam. So we're gonna bring out all kinds of blues. We're gonna do all kinds of things with tones. And we're just gonna give this image a total color grading makeover. So let's get right into it. The very first thing I do with all my edits is I go straight to the tone curve and apply a medium contrast curve. From here, we're gonna go back up to the basic panel and start with the exposure. We're gonna go about plus 0.3. There we go, just open up the total exposure just a little bit. And then with their contrast, we're gonna add about plus 25. Perfect. Now with our highlights, we do wanna cut those back a little bit, about minus 40 or so. There we go. Now with our shadows, you can see a lot of our image takes place in the shadows. So we're gonna open those up quite a bit. Let's go to about plus 70, there we go. And you can see that's already made a huge difference. With the whites, we're only gonna go up about plus 30, not too much. And then with the blacks, we're gonna go down about minus 30. There we go. Okay, awesome. So you can see that there's quite a bit of contrast going on. Ooh, right off the bat, I can, as soon as I zoomed in, I was able to see this really, really gnarly chromatic aberration. So let's just go ahead and take care of that right now before I forget. Under lens correction, under manual, I'm gonna take the defringe and then do about 10 on that. And thank goodness that chromatic aberration is gone. Awesome. So we're back at the basic panel. Let's check out presence. We're gonna go to the clarity and we're gonna cut that down quite a bit, about minus 25. The clarity hones directly into the mid-tones contrast. And with an image like this, we don't want a ton of that. We want this to have almost like a fairy tale type look, which in turn means not a whole lot of super hard edges. With the vibrance, we're gonna keep the vibrance where it's at. Then with our saturation, we're gonna cut it down to about minus 10. There we go, perfect. Moving along, we're gonna start into our split toning now. So with the highlights, we're gonna be adding in warmer tones. So we're gonna move the hue to about 55 or 60 or so. 55 is good. And then we're gonna add it in by using the saturation slider. We're gonna crank that to about 35 or so. Yeah, 35 looks good. And then in the shadows, we're gonna add the cooler tones. We're gonna go around 245 or so. And then we're gonna add that in with the saturation slider as well. About 20, there we go. Okay, fantastic. So let's scroll up and let's start manipulating the tone curve because we're not quite done with our color grading yet. Now that we're at the tone curve, Next to channel, you'll see RGB. This is actually a drop down menu where you can actually hone in and modify the tone curve under a specific color channel. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select blue. And here we are, a linear tone curve, and we're gonna add two nodes here. One right in the middle or so, and then we'll split the difference here and add another one in the middle of those two. So with these two nodes selected, we're gonna take the node all the way to the left and we're gonna raise that up somewhere around 6% or so. There we go. And then our node in the middle, we're gonna move it to around right here. We're just gonna increase that just a little bit as well. And then with our node in the middle, let's move it to the left just a hair. And what we did there is we really manipulated really just the color blue and the total contrast that appears within the blue channel. And to even further emphasize that effect, 
We're gonna go from channel blue back to RGB, and then we're gonna hit this with a matte finish. And that's really gonna bring out the blues and the shadows here. So with that, we're gonna go to the node second from the left, double click to remove it. And then we're just gonna take the node all the way to the left and raise it up some. There we go, about 7% or so. And then we're gonna take the node all the way to the right and reduce that one as well to cut our highlights. Fantastic, so let's take a look at really the power of the tone curve here. Let's, so let's turn it off completely and turn it back on. It makes a huge difference in color grading. So we're not quite done manipulating our colors quite yet. Let's go to the HSL and we're gonna hone in on luminance. And what luminance allows us to do is go channel by channel of colors and manipulate the total exposure of each one of those colors. So we're gonna take our yellows here, as you can see there's some pretty harsh yellows in the background that are really distracting, and go about minus 30. Okay, great. And then as well with the greens, we're gonna go even further with those, about minus 40 on those. Awesome, and now take a look at what that did, because it seems very subtle when you're doing it, but when you turn it off and on, you can see it made a substantial difference. So now the last thing I wanna do with the overall color is change the temperature. So in the color temperature slider, I'm gonna increase it by adding some yellow. There we go, about 5,900 Kelvin, I like that. Awesome, I like the way her skin tones are maintained here. And I still feel like this background here is kinda of distracting, so what I'm gonna do is kinda of cut that down just a little bit. The way I'm gonna do that is with the adjustment brush or you can press K on your keyboard. I double click on effect to make sure everything is zeroed out before I start painting. And I just wanna cut the exposure of that just a little bit, maybe half a stop. And then highlights as well, I wanna bring those down, let's just say minus 40 or so. And with a pretty large, heavily feathered brush, I'm gonna brush that in. There we go, perfect. And then I'm gonna click on the erase and just erase around our subject. Very, very subtle effect here. But that made a huge difference in our background. It's not quite as distracting now. Let's turn that off, turn it back on. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's significantly better. The last thing I'm gonna do to round out this image is go down to detail and increase the sharpening from 25 up to about 70. The reason why I do this is because I do these edits with the intent to print. And I find when I increase the sharpening, it makes the image look a lot better when I go to print it. Well, there we have it. Let me know what you think about this edit down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. And if you thought this color grading was pretty cool, make sure you save it as a preset so you can use it as a foundational piece on one of your edits in the future. Well, I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom. Mm -hmm.